All right, curves. Well, to do some cleanup here, basically what I did is I took and named all my objects. So a blade is a blade, and I can do this by going into the mesh menu and name it blade, call it handle and pommel. Whether those be real, as far as those names, you can name it ham cheese sandwich for all I care. But the fact is I have some scene management here and I can now shut them off in Outliner. Okay. I also have the curve. I'm going to get rid of this. There we go. So I have everything hid because I want to show you curves. So I'm going to start out with a nice fresh curve. Add mesh curve. Okay. In edit mode, this construct of a curve basically consists of points and these rocker arms. You can move the point around and you can move the rocker arm around. Rocker arm is consists of a pivot point of the point itself and it indicates the flow from point to point. Get used to moving these around before you even start the complex part of this assignment. Uh, so. You know, play around with these, get used to grabbing them, get used to moving them around. Okay, also, E on the keyboard will add more. And if I have something that's very tight, like this, like a transition from here to here, you can see that the resolution will work rather well. Here, in the curve menu, I can choose that resolution. So right now there's 12 resolution points between points. And I know that's kind of confusing, but uh, there's so from here to here, there's 12 hidden points that you don't see in U. And by dropping this down, I can choose a rougher transition between those points. Notice this is a curve. So in that case, if I lock it to the orthographics, I'm moving it only in the top view. But certainly, a curve can consist of x, y, and z. If I hit A on the keyboard to highlight all these, notice these rocker arms are kind of detrimental to the curve. In other words, these are going in some of the times the polar opposite direction of the curve. So over here, they have auto handles. And that just smooths out the transition between points. Very good. Let's look at some more complex stuff. Let's add a curve circle. Okay, wait, undo that. Go back into object mode first and then add the circle. Very important because that way it's an independent circle. So these are two separate objects. I'm going to shrink this one up quite a bit. This can be anywhere in the scene. It doesn't matter. So I can just throw it over here if I wanted to. I'm going to highlight this one in object mode and go down into its features and use bevel object. And I'm going to choose that circle that I made. So bam, we have what? A tube. And if we hit A on the keyboard, or tab on the keyboard, sorry. I can now go back into the edit mode and move these around. And you can see what happens when I move the rocker arms closer together. It presents a tighter fit. And all of a sudden, I got a kink. Another thing I like to show off is the wireframe. So go back to object mode and click on wire. So now you can see the resolution of it. And this resolution is pretty high. There's no doubt about it. That way it does support the transition of this. Well, how do I change the resolution? Very easy. Go into the curve. And you can see up above here, I got the 9U. Okay, So you can see that's going to change the resolution based upon the curve's U point. Okay, how do I change the resolution going around it? Well, that is handling via this object here. 
So let me move this closer. And you notice it has a preview. If I lower this one down, you can see I get a much lower res mesh. So the combination thereof, the fact that this is a curve, it has a preview, this is a curve, it has a preview, it makes up this tube. And if I get things too close together, let's say like this and it starts kinking, I can hit A. And then I can go into auto handles. And you can see it, it kind of smooths out that transition and adds to the area that needs that transition to have more resolution in that area. Very cool stuff. All right. So that's 101 of a curve. I wanted to cover that before we even climb into the next part, which is adding a rope to the handle. It's, it's kind of an arduous task, but before you get into that next video, please move these around a little bit and get used to uh, manipulating the rocker arms and points and learn how to change the resolution back and forth because those are things I'm not going to cover very well in the next video. In the next video, I'm just concentrating on putting a rope around a handle. All right, so let's move into that next video and we'll see how that goes.